Hello everybody! Welcome! My name is Asa Ryan. And today, I've got something for you that should be a bit of a laugh. Today I'm playing Yong Lei, an utterly balanced and very underpowered leader. Not. We're already off to a good start. This is going to be a bit of an unbalanced game. Recently, I had the pleasure of filming and then distributing a 40,000 subscriber special game of Japan on a true star earth. It was wonderful. I'm still forever grateful about it, but in that game, some things happened that made me think, huh, you know, Ursa, I think that might be quite a fun game. Today, I'm going to test that theory. My goal is to make a giga capital, an absolutely filthy capital of a population that you have yet to see on this channel. Our record for a city is about 60, which is okay, but I think we can do better. I think we can do much, much better than that. After all, if you've watched Sir Duck's Lancelot, you'll know that the population on a city can go very high indeed given the right conditions. However, my plan will be to do this in anger, in a game that hasn't been set up perfectly for this cause. Can I win the game and also make a filthy big capital? Well, yes. Yes, I think we can. And here's why it's going to be so fun. I have extended great people in this game that we've seen before, including the Great Sovereigns. I am playing with CYP's Wide and Tall mod, which offers fantastic improvements for cities as long as you don't settle too many, including these extension buildings. We'll talk about these later. I have Religion's Expanded mode on and a mod that lets us basically choose whatever pantheon we want. That means we can set up our build perfectly. And I'm playing with Barb Clans, Secret Societies, and Monopolies and Corporations mode all turned on. I have, however, turned Culture Victory off today, so no need to worry about that. And we've got a mod which fixes the builder requirements for monopolies and the AI. So it's all good. As ever, the full mod list as well as the save file for this game are all in Discord. Come along to Discord. It's a wonderful place full of me and, you know, 13 other thousand people, but me mainly. So sit down, clear your schedule, your diary. You don't need your diary. Your calendar? Rip it up. Take it off the wall and rip it down. All you'll need to do is watch this video. Oh, Ursa, I don't have a written calendar. I can keep it all on my phone. Rip your phone up as well. You won't be needing that. No, it's Civ. Nothing but Ursa and Civ forever. You're not stuck here with me. I'm stuck here with you. Wait, what? <laughs> Let's just get going. And now, for an important update. Having been expelled from Oxford University, Ursa Bear had met a man named Paul. Oh dear. Luckily for Ursa Bear, he had amassed 40,000 subscriptions. These beautiful little signatures attracted the attention of none other than Gilgabro. Scared off by the majesty, Paul retreated and left Ursa Bear to his way. Searching for new subscriptions, Ursa Bear traveled to the coast, where lo and behold, it looked like more people. More people for subscriptions. Alas, it was not to be. Ursa Bear, our sweet innocent bear is now trapped, harassed by giant crabs. Will you save Ursa Bear from crabs? Will you help Ursa towards his goal? Thank you so much. Back to the video. Turn one, I'm looking at settling locations. I'm going to give myself a little bit more visibility by moving my warrior over to the left. This is Deity Standard Speed and it's a Highlands map, as you can clearly see from the fact that it never gets written down. Why is that? 12 players, so we've got a huge amount of space and my plan is to make a filthy big capital and to do that I'm going to need hundreds of neighborhoods, a lot of space and a lot of amenities. We'll get to the amenities a little bit later, but for me it's all about getting as many workable tiles as I can. Things like mountains, lakes, luxury going in the long run, these will all be very bad for me. Speaking of luxuries though, I know we've got spices, which is culture, and olives, which is civilian units. These aren't the exciting ones though. We're looking for sugar, salt, honey, or coca. Don't see anything like that in my capital, unfortunately, but never mind. In order to remove myself from two unworkable tiles later into the game, and to work this tile, but I would normally not be able to, I'm going to actually move on to the olives and settle here. Now this makes my city center gold delicious as well as giving me that luxury from the beginning of the game. It's wonderful. I think I've spoken about this on the channel before, but there is a really fun Yonglei strategy where we use the amazing Leisure projects to rush faith. And this gives me the first pantheon which lets me pick anything I want. Luckily for me, I have a mod called Spare Belief Sum. This basically means that we can pick whatever we want. So pantheon wise, we, we're not going to have to worry about that particularly. Visibility is still important on any game, but I also want to get my capital to 10 population as soon as I can. As soon as we get to 
times 10 population, my capital is worth 10 science, 10 culture, and 20 gold per turn more than it ordinarily was. I've also got two, four two tiles. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes, indeed. I find Highlands maps are full of barbarians and they're really dangerous. So I'm actually gonna just go for a warrior. Sink in two population with two popular, uh, with eight turns. I, I like it. It's, there's a symmetry there that I enjoy. I know it's not crazy optimized, but I like it. Astrology, I do want a religion. There's one particular religion I want this game and it may not be the one you're thinking of. Now it doesn't matter if we have some mountains and some lakes and a little bit of busyness around our land. It doesn't matter. As long as we have predominantly a lot of land, later into the game, I can start to do this and put neighborhoods everywhere. Just, just trust me, I'm gonna be doing a lot of that later into the game. Just so you know as well, all of this marsh, all of this rainforest, yeah, this has gotta go. This has absolutely gotta go. Oh look, the barbs have appeared from the other direction I've moved my warrior in. Huzzah! Which way are you gonna go? Where are you going? I'm gonna watch ya. Uh, this way? It's not very helpful. I want to know where your camp is. Are you gonna go to the right? Yeah, you are. Over in that direction. Okay, well, I'll circle back and this warrior will head down there, but with friends. Saved up 50 gold. Beautiful. Let's buy a tile. A 4-2 tile in particular. My capital will start to grow nicely now. Yes. Very nicely indeed. Two warriors, two population, two amazing tiles that I'm working right off the bat. Excellent. I'm going to try and get a settler out as soon as I can. Now, one thing I'm going to make sure is that I don't settle too close to my capital. I need a big space. I want my capital to be absolutely massive. By the way, if there are any city-states around me at all, yeah, they won't be around me for very long. Where are you, Sattler? Where did you go? Come on out. Ursa wants to play with you. I won't play rough. I promise. Sharpened dagger. But I honestly have no idea where they've gone. Is this slightly disconcerting? Yes, I don't fit. Oh, there you are. Oh, hello. Okay, this is problematic. Well, actually, you know what? I can actually set up shop here. This is okay. Attack into me. Yes. Yes, Code of Laws. Oh, this is bad timing for you, friend. Now I have discipline. Hehehe, <laughs> I'm God King. Actually, I don't need to rush that pantheon, do I? Because I've got projects. I'm going to put urban planning in. I very rarely do that. But as this warrior makes its way south, you are just going to fortify. That gives me an extra defensive bonus, and I'm on the rainforest. And I've got plus five. You will watch as these warriors now charge into me and do basically tons of damage to themselves and leave me very happy indeed. Yep, yep. There we go. Look at that. I took 19 damage and 16 damage, and that's it. They did huge damage back to themselves. I am a defensive wall, and now I have a double layer of defense. Go on then. Break me. Break me if you can. Yes, you will be destroyed upon the endless wall of my bulging pecs, and now I have a battle cry, which means I've healed up even more. <laughs> it's been approximately 13 minutes of recording, and Ursa's already lost it. Go on. Throw yourself upon me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep, you can attack me with slingers if you really want. I don't think it's going to work for you like you want it to, though, because I'm charging in. Bronze working boosted already. Actually, I might have left myself open to be killed there. This may work exactly how the barbs wanted it to work. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this very wrong. Never mind. This is a plus two holy site, and it's also on one of the few clear sites that I can pop it down on. So I'm going to be building it very quickly. I've also identified this lovely plains hill that's seven tiles away from my city center. That is the optimum amount. No luxuries over here, unfortunately, but I know this area is roughly safe, so my settler will make its way down in this direction. Now, I would like irrigation as fast as I can. I want to get rid of marshes, and I want to put plantations down. Are they saying that? I think I would actually like to get bronze working first. Now go on, split your attacks. Don't keep attacking the same unit. Yes, that's good. We can get one kill. Although saying that, I think I might have unfortunately just left this warrior to die. There's no way you can run. There's literally no way you can run. All right, sacrifice yourself for the greater good. Oh, I didn't even have the movement to pillage. I thought I'd have the movement. It's on a marsh tile. It was free food. It was there all along. I totally missed that. Fine. Right. I mean, that could have gone better. <laughs> What a numpty. My warrior's dead. Goodbye, sweet prince. Unless they keep charging after this one, which is unlikely. Yeah, no, it's not going to happen. 
We'll come back in greater number. Okay, the slinger is going to be problematic, but what I could do is use my warrior to almost tempt it into doing something it shouldn't do in the settler. By moving my settler there, the slinger will have no choice but to feast. I mean, I can go and claim it back and the slinger won't have attacked me. I think that is genius. In the meantime, my capital really does need to build another warrior because my new holy site is going to just get pillaged by this yellow goat warrior, isn't it? I can just tell now. Oh, if only I'd been able to like clear that, that would have been very helpful helpful. Never mind. Warriors being built. Yep. And just like I'd hoped, bam, you fell for my trap. This slinger is going to chase after me. That gives me time to get my promotion, which is good. You're just attacking my city repeatedly. I will take that. That is fine. Craftsmanship is on boost territory. Let's go foreign trade. And Mr. Slinger, you're going to have to move off this tile. This is my tile. I have claimed this under the rights of all things ancient and Ursa. That is my sandwich eating tile. That is my crisp mountain. Yes. Yes. Didn't think so. Oh, another barb camp. Huzzah. We love it. We love having this much threat, he says. I wouldn't normally charge myself into settlers so early, but I like the idea of just utilizing some of this space. There's a lot of space around me here. City number two. Huzzah! Now the CYP mod, I should point this out. It gives benefits depending on how close to the industrial era you are. That's when everything unlocks and how many cities you have. Once you go beyond seven cities, there's very few things that that mod will give you. So seven is the max. However, five, five is perfect amount in my head. Late game is a bunch of cards that apply to up to five cities at the most. So five is what I'm going to go for. No more, no less. Etimananki has been built already on turn 29. It's fine. Don't overthink it. I'm sure it's okay. Early Empire has been advanced. Excellent. Now we explore further, braver, bolder. Well, we've replaced all the slingers with a single spearman. Uh-oh. How sad. How sad this is for you. Are oh, you going to charge at me, are you? Leave your encampment. I love the bravery. That's wonderful. Go on, attack me. Really double up on it. I know you want to. Oh, they did it and everything. <laughs> Bronze working is boosted now. We've got iron. Did we get any iron? No, is the short answer. We don't need it, though. We don't need it. Now we go to irrigation. I want to be able to chop down this all. I'm actually thinking Thinking. Going for a Magna start might be really good for me here. Now, which Pantheon am I going to choose? I mean, yeah, the mod gives basically unlimited copies of every Pantheon. It's pretty cool. And I'm playing with the Extended Religions mod, so there are more Pantheons available to me. The choices are rather ridiculous. Um, there, there are a lot of choices. However, the one that I'm going to be picking is fairly standard, and it's one you've seen before. But trust me, late game, this is going to be ridiculous. Fertility rights. I know housing, amenities, these are all things that would be very, very handy to have, but I can compensate from that sort of stuff. What I would like is city growth rate increases by 10% trust me. Just trust me on this one. And a free builder. That's really cool. Oh, we're going to have a bit of fun. Just a little bit of fun. Before I destroy this barb clan, I'm actually going to just hire a spearman as well, because this helps with my exploration. I want to know what's around me. I want to know where the barbs are, and I want to know where to settle. But I'm actually going to put my next city down by this lake. Again, we're going for fresh water on a lake's map. can be a little bit tricky to find sometimes. And I want it far enough away from my capital, but I haven't got to worry about overspilling. Now we can destroy the clan. Goodbye. Writing boosted. Irrigation boosted. Archery boost. I'm sorry, what? We got three boosts from that. Is that regular? I've never actually known how the game calculates those boosts. Is it totally RNG? Is it random? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, we're plummeting into a dark age, by the way, but I haven't met anyone yet, so I don't think it's such a problem. Owls of Minerva discovered as I found Preslav for the first time. Excellent. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, pop Magnus in my capital. Seems like a strange choice. Yes, I know, but I want to be cutting out this rainforest as soon as I can, and I'd like to get 50% bonus yield from it because I reckon we can get some really funny results from this. Yeah, the housing cap, it's going to be a bit of a problem for my capital. I need to get to 12 housing as soon as I can. Preslav wasn't very interesting for me, by the way. Granada, mm, not so much either. Who are we hoping for? Well, Chingeti would be the ultimate perfect pick for a high population game. Well, I'll show you exactly why later. Irrigation is mine. Animal husbandry. I'm feeling lonely. I I need a husband, and unfortunately, the only thing I have is horse. City number three. Again, it's seven tiles away. I probably could have settled on the actual spice tile there, but I want them to be close enough to my capital that the visibility is not going to be an issue once the borders expand. Trust me, there, there's, a, there's a whole reason for it. Oh, that Bob clan was just killed by Muscat. Nice meeting you, friend. Oh, look at this. Oh, we've got tons of stuff. 
Two spare production now for any units I build and two gold in the capital. That's amazing. We got plenty of space, haven't we? I was worried we wouldn't have enough space to do this challenge. I should not have worried. I reckon another city over here by this lake and then we'll find somewhere for my final city. Magnus is established. I'm actually going to start removing rainforest from tiles I'm going to be working. I know, I can hear you screaming already. But I want to get to 10 population as soon as I can and these sort of boosts, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Let's get out another shrine and then we can start chopping that down as well. We're up to 6 population in Beijing. Lovely. Trust me, the tile yields are not going to matter in the long run. That is not what we're worried about. You know what I haven't found? Any tribal villages? None. So far, look at all this space I've explored. Not a single one. Weird. Very weird. There's my Dark Age. What am I going to go for today? I reckon free inquiry. Easiest way of getting extra stuff. Now, horses. Horsey, horsey, horses. I've got some there. There is one copy in my capital. That's not ideal. I want my capital to, to, yeah, to be bereft, to be useless, to be totally empty. Look at these tiles, they're decent, I know. I know they could have been for food, but we chopped out some stuff, which I'm happy about, so that's all good. Hey, tribal village. I summoned it into being by moaning loudly about the game. Yes, that's the message to take away, ladies and gentlemen. Moan about your problems repeatedly until it happens. Just complain. I tell you what I do need to do. I need at least one city, ideally, to be on a river, which is a good thing, seeing as I found zero rivers. All right, well, maybe, maybe Maybe rivers are not ideal in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lakes map after all, but sometimes they can be a little bit absent, to put it lightly. A governor, and seeing as the game has given me three separate city-states, let's enjoy that. By Armani Tour. Oh, first off to Preslav, go and explore that. We'll get some score and we'll go from there. Oh, another tribal village. 40 gold from this one, we'll see what that one's got. 100 gold for a horse, it's expensive, but my capital will work it and we'll get craftsmanship boosted and we'll get a pasture improvement as well. So there's all kinds of double bonuses we've got going on there. Look at that state workforce. Let's get that rocking as fast as we can as well. I'm going to put myself on builder focus for a bit. And I, yeah, I don't normally do that, but I've got a builder being worked over there. I've got a builder being worked over here and then I'm going to be building stuff here as well afterwards. So kind of works in my head. Oh, this is a new continent. Ah, that's interesting. Maybe I can put my fifth city in that direction. A little bit further away from my capital, but it might give me some more luxuries. That was a three population and I'm already up to seven pop. Okay then. I'm going to go builder, builder, and then we're going to go for leisure food and we're going to see if we can get my capital to 10 pop as fast as possible here. In order to do this, the housing needs to go up in my capital. That's why I'm pumping builders out here as quick as I can. That's why for now, I'm building things like pastures wherever I can. It's all about housing. Up to 10 housing, we need to get to 12 as soon as possible. A barbarian appears, but where? Over here, roughly. All right, we've actually got a couple of units sort of awaiting in the rough area. We'll go and seek that out. That's not a problem. Let's clear this marsh. 54 food. Beautiful. Bam. Yes. Yes, keep on growing, capital. Eight population now. We're almost, almost at the epiphany level. The number, the big number. The leisure number. There's a river. I found a river. I found an actual river, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my lord. Never did we think we'd see this day. Preslav bows to me. You'd better. I'm glorious. There's another lovely river over in that direction. Okay. Well, Armani, I'm going to move you on immediately. Don't celebrate for too long. Let's now move you to Granada. I'm getting more of the map each time. More era score. It's lovely. We'll unlock a government. Another governor. Actually, Magnus, give you surplus logistics. 20% growth in the city yes yes so now we're already up to 30 percent growth in the city 10 percent from my pantheon and 20 percent from that ability it's an extra two food per turn if you don't think two food per turn is very big then just wait until you see this game later it just trust me on that okay now the project starts we're up to 18 production in my capital here that means nine extra food per turn so just watch this because that doesn't incorporate the growth bonuses we're on 7.7 .7. we'll revert and have a look at that next turn. It's not 7.7 .7 anymore. It's 21.9. Yeah, my project is boosted by all of the growth bonuses I was talking about before. And we'll get more food still by cutting down the rainforest. And the production from cutting down the rainforest also gets put back into this project. So more population appear even further. We're almost at 10 pop already. Almost. Almost. Inca. Oh, Inca on a Highlands map. At least we'll have somebody having a bit of fun with this map. Honored to meet you. Love to sum your hospitality. And today, not playing any ridiculous challenge so I can get trading immediately. There you go. There's my luxury. I'll have yours. Thank you so much. I can either give you some horses. Stop horsing around, I say. Delegation. Open borders. 
I'll make a friend out of you before you know it. You'll have no choice. You'll be like, Ursa, oh, he's such a handsome, glorious man. I must be his friend. I must. Keeping on top of the housing. We're five turns away from 10 population in Beijing. And this is going to give me severe yields. It's going to double my science per turn, triple my culture per turn, and double my gold per turn. And just when my first city hits that population cap. Granada now bows to me. Yes. More. More. Oh, that's annoying. I wanted to be the one to clear that clan. Never mind. Granada's going to steal the plaudits for it. But I do have enough gold to buy a swordsman. I'm going to do that just so that I've got one strong unit. I've learned on these big maps. It's always good to keep way more of a standing army than you may think is needed. All of the sovereigns are being taken really quickly, by the way. I don't know what it is about this mod, but the AI just guns for them so quickly. We'll keep an eye out for what we can do. How's my religion coming? along. I, I, you know, I'm not far away. Catholicism's been taken. They've gone for the science on shrines and temples. That's often something you see with this mod. I do want every city to have a holy site. So we'll keep an eye on that for a little bit. But let's get a trader running. I'm going to send one from my capital in a little bit. Beijing cuts another rainforest. Boop. Go on, are you close? Are you close? Oh, much closer. Much closer than we were before. That's good. Oh, you left the camp. All right. Don't tease me like this. If I'm lucky with the chop, we might even hit 10 population next turn. Go on. Do it for me. You know you want to do it. You know you want to do it. Yes. First city to 10 pop in the game. Oh, you know you love it. 21 science per turn, 16 culture per turn, 40 gold per turn. Yong Lei has started doing Yong Lei things. I'm going to take myself off the growth bonus now. I'm going to work to be building a little bit of infrastructure in my capital. Weirdly, districts, I'm going to barely put any districts in my capital at all. We're going to focus instead on improving it. A lot of farms, a lot of farms, a lot of getting to feudalism as quickly as possible. See how it goes. There's, there's options for me here. Germany has denounced the evil deeds of the Incans. What have you been up to? I don't even know. I don't know if I want to know. I just don't even know. Classical Republic. Actually, that gives my capital a little bit more food. Sorry, a little bit more housing, which is lovely. Monasticism. That's a huge science bonus. I'm going to take that. Use the Golden Age or the Dark Age whilst I can. Diplomatic League is such a wonderful card. I always want it. We've got the Builder Charges. And I'm going to go for Settlers. And we're actually going to start pumping some of these out now. I only need five cities, but here is a river. It is tempting. It's also on a new continent as well, which I quite like the sound of. Destroy the outpost. Yes. Another bunch of stuff. I realize I should have moved Amani on. Why did I not do that? No one's sure. Muscat, go and explore there. Let's pick up mysticism. We want to head to Temple as soon as we can. Beijing has a monument finished in it now. The culture's creeping ever up. I do like the fact that I'm on 35 science. Oh, this is the fun utilization and synergy between monasticism and Yonglei's ability. It's brilliant. Cardiff to my south. Not such a useful one for me today, but France has met them, so okay. We know that Catherine is around somewhere. Muscat bows to me. And here is my religion. Ta-da! As discussed before, we have a few options here, but there's only one that I really want to go for. This one. Fruits of labor. 1% production for each citizen following my religion. That's tiny. At the moment, I think I'll only have 7 or 8%. 7 or 8% of a very small number is an even smaller number. However, this, this has no limits. It has no bounds. And it's going to get rather silly at some point in the game. Just, just you wait. I'm going to follow that up with everyone's favorite dentistry-based religious choice. Choice. Teeth. Haha. <laughs> Two gold for every four followers of a religion. Anything population based that scales? Yeah, that's going to be pretty handy. Excellent. Let's just let this work itself in. And as you can see, 8% bonus production, currently worth two per turn. It's okay. It's fine. But we can get that a lot better. A lot better, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want to reveal more of this map, but the barbarians are a nuisance. So I'm going to do something that I always mean to do and never get around to doing. I'm going to make horsemen scouts. They're so much faster and they're so much tougher. Oh, there's the letter. It looks like Vietnam is in this game. Oh, Vietnam always plays very well. Lumber mills. I like lumber mills. Big old boosts to production in a city that can put one down. Currency. Okay, that's actually very handy. We do want trade routes and I want them in large amounts through the game. For today, I will be going for 
owls, and those are not gilded vaults and gilded vaults. Well, gilded vaults are a lot of fun. That's more trade routes. More trade routes means more food in my capital later on. It's France. We have 92 science. Hello. Yeah, I'd love to sample your hospitality. What have you got going on? So I've got three cities and 19 pop. Inca's got seven and 22, seven and 24. Good to know. You want my luxury. Excellent. I can buy one of yours even better. And we've got some dip play favor we can start selling to the world as well. Hey, look at this. Trade. Friendly trade. Happy trade. Mount Roryama. That's probably one of the reasons why France has got such crazy science, but we won't question it too hard. So later into the game, one of the things we're going to look forward to doing is installing a puppet government. We saw this a little bit in the previous Japanese game we played, but this lets me effectively own a city with a huge resource penalty. 90% on science, culture and faith and great person points and 50% on production, gold, 10% on food. It's, it's massively damaging. However, I can still build tall extensions and I can still apply all of the bonuses for my empire based on not having many cities. It's a really good way of countering that. Persia, five cities and 16 population. What happened to you? Whatever it is, you're not happy about it. I reckon they've been in a bit of a scrap. You at war with somebody? Yes. Persia seems to have come out of that war. Definitely not on the friendly end. Vietnam. Are you the one that's been to war with Persia? Yes. Oh, it is you. That's fun. You've got a luxury for me. Even better. You'll buy all my stuff. Even better still. I'll just keep buying shrines. I'm just going to actually use a lot of this beautiful trade and leisure gold to really, really get into the AI economies here. Right, we'll get horsemen. Beijing needs to expand and it needs to expand quickly now. Free era score. A beautiful holy site is finished again. Let's just get the shrine in quickly. I need to spread my religion to these two cities, but that's easy enough to do with a missionary. And as we start to pick up builders in Beijing, one thing I'm going to keep an eye on. When can I build my first tall extension? Now, if I've only got three cities, I only need 15 population to get my first. I'm tempted to rush that as soon as I can because there's this one that I think is going to be very important for me. Doubles the effect of follower beliefs in the city. Hmm. Well, there's no way that that one won't spiral out of control. <laughs> It's going to be wonderful. Apprenticeship. It's a good upgrade for me, but it's housing I need. Anything that will give me housing. Very little will give me housing, to be honest with you. So I'll just get some basic techs and just see what that lands me after. The government plaza is complete. I do want to be able to pump out settlers in a little bit, but I think for now, let's pick up owls. Some people will like that. Some people would dislike that. Actually, a lot of people are already owls. It's just Persia that aren't. Ah, interesting. Well, I mean, I wonder what we're going to be doing. Oh, yep. Audience chamber. Four extra housing and two extra immunities in my capital. It's needed. I need housing desperately. Good thing about owls is I've now got another policy card. Builders, urban planning. I'll go for purchasing tiles. I don't normally do this one, but I think I will be doing that fairly rigorously. So let's get that rocking. Oh, it's Elizabeth. Oh, my Lord. We were just playing you. Honored to meet you. Yes. I wonder how she'll do on a landlocked map. It's an interesting one. England should play fine. There are enough lakes to make the odd harbour around every now and then. We'll see if they can make use of it. Spain. Hello, Spain. Where are you? Over there. Ma'am, there's a lot of space on this map. And of all the space, Inca just have settled all over the desert, but we won't question that too much. Oh, I just realised I put an envoy into Cardiff and Valletta just after I put owls in, so there was no card on that third slot and I didn't get the bonus envoy. Well, that's frustrating. Never mind. Okay, we just did a round of diplomacy and I've made friends with everyone else that's a member of the owls. Vietnam, France, Inca. We've got some friends now. That's good. We may not keep them for very long in this game, but having them right now is important. Germany, speaking of friends. Wanted to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. What are you doing in this game, I wonder? I might make the housing situation in my capital worse here, but there is an industry. Bit more food, bit more production on that towel. 20% extra culture in the city. That's, that's not bad. And here's a man at arms. Just to increase the strength of all of my cities, just in case the barbs do decide to attack us. More religion. Yay. All right, what am I going to do in this city? I wanted to get a 10 population again as quickly as possible. So let's start with the leisure projects. I'm going to do it in this city afterwards as well. If I can get three cities of 10 population, you know you're playing Yongle right. 
Time to really, really start to accelerate Beijing's growth here. I'm gonna start an epic project of just cutting stuff down. Do I wait for the housing to finish first? I've never actually known if the housing reduces the amount that you cut food-wise. I don't think it does, but I'll leave it three turns just in case. I, last thing I wanna do is just waste a bunch of stuff, so I won't. I won't this time, no, no. Oh yes, the grand terraforming project of Beijing has truly started now. Everything must go, everything. They gave the audience chamber is finished, which means I have the food project on both of my second cities to get those up to 10 population as quickly as I can. But Beijing now has both happiness and housing. Oh, growth, genuine growth. Who would have thought it? Right, quickly, let's embrace that by putting myself back on the food project. There are multiple stages of governor that I would like in my big city. Magnus at the beginning really helps with growth rate. 20% extra growth rate is a big deal. Pingala can't be overstated as well. 15% science and culture, and then another culture and science per citizen. I mean, we know how effective that is in the capital. This is kind of like the bit we need to do when the city's not growing anymore. So once we've hit 15 population, I think we'll switch to Pingala. Late game, it's Liang that takes over because Liang has waterworks, plus two housing for each neighborhood. That's big. That's really big. That means we'll get to sort of colossal levels at the end of the game with her. But she's very late game. Very, very late game. We don't need to worry about that just yet. I'm going to start building up Pingala though. Good to have Pingala around. And we've actually got some decently populated second cities. These second cities are actually as populated as some of my bigger cities in a lot of other games. I mean, look at the Incan desert cities. One, two, two, two. I'm up to almost seven population in this city. It's glorious. In fact, just watch the growth in both of these cities once the food project takes effect going into the next turn because it hasn't quite co uh, populated itself just yet, but watch this. Bam, growth in three turns, growth in four turns, growth in two turns. Oh, it's what you like to see. Feudalism boosted as well. I was just making sure we've got enough farms down. It's the double effect, really. I need to make sure I've got the housing, but the boost is also really nice as well. The Dutch, oh, she has salt. Remember that? Salt is one of the luxuries that we wanted for city growth. I don't know if you have realized, but this game is going to be hyper aggressive. Once we've built up a bit of a base, I will be conquering. I just need to learn how to puppet cities first. It's gonna treat myself to a temple in my capital. Oh, I love the fact that chopping out a project really gives you a food boost. It's, it's amazing. Delicate arch. We have overshot on era score to a level that is ridiculous here. Actually, to make sure we've got the happiness and the housing in every city, instead of just getting Pingala, let's get Liang. We've now got all the governors we want. They're all set up in my cities. I'm just waiting before settling because I really like the idea of getting that tall extension building in as fast as I can. Now on to feudalism. Oh, I'm looking forward to feudalism. Farm improvements, gaining food for adjacent farms, puppet government, extra builder slots, feudal contract. Is there a better civic? Oh, yes, there probably is. I still, I still love professional sports. It's one of my favorites, but it's up there. It's up there. A 15 population city by turn 87. Yeah, we are seriously taking our quest today. Our quest for a ginormous city. We're taking it very, very seriously. So here is a population 15 Beijing. You will note, but I have 12, absolutely amazingly, 12 people following my religion already, which means I've got 12% production bonus. That's worth 4.4. It's like a mediocre work ethic. Don't worry, that will get better and better and better. So just the temple to all extension building. It gives us two extra faith, 0.25 faith for each citizen in the city. That's not a very big amount, but it also doubles the effect of follower beliefs in the city. So suddenly that'll go to 8.8 .8 production and that'll increase my food and it'll just keep going around in circles from there. It's, it's, it's lovely. I tell you what, it's quite expensive, but I think I'll try and afford it with gold right now because I'm still growing and I want the housing cap to be right on the limit. Actually, mm, no, I want the production for now. Let's get the tall extension building in. Once I have that, I can afford to get myself a settler and we can get our fourth and fifth cities out because the other extension buildings, they're important, but they're not so important. Oh, the screen looks so much brighter. It's a heroic age, it can only be. And we have the first golden age provided by the CYP mod, City Life. Now, most of it is useless to us. 5% science, culture, faith, and great person points in cities with at least 20 population. That's not very useful, but 15% faster growth and two loyalty per turn for cities of my original continent. 15% faster growth. That's really handy. Weirdly, I don't need monumentality because I'm producing my builders very quickly because there's very little else to be doing in my capital right now. Instead, I'm going to take free inquiry and pen, brush, and voice. I'm already getting 10% bonus tech cost from my Eurekas and 10% civic cost from Inspirations. This now means I'm getting another 10%. So 
Combining that with my China Dynastic Cycle ability, we're now going to start getting some big tech boosts. Really big ones. I was just waiting on this clan to disperse it when my new age had kicked in. There you go. Get an envoy for Cardiff. Two era score and an age that actually helps me. It's all good. My exploration's doing really well as well. We're about to go and meet, I think, somebody new. No, this is where Spain is. Ah, okay. Huge map, though. Absolutely huge map. I'm looking forward to this getting a little bit crazy. Canada. Very useful to know. They love Diplo Favor. Voting. Let's do city center buildings. And I would love to culture bomb. Hey, T points for old Ursa. Excellent. Oh, an aid request. I'm going to start joining in on these because I don't generate any carbon at the moment. So we can do our old favorite trick as feudalism finishes. Find who it is. It's Persia. Go to them. Give them one gold. Now, if the AI forgets to do the projects, which it often does, I will get 100 favor and two Diplo points. I don't think we'll be going for a Diplo victory today, but it's always fun to have the points. Now, my religion, I'm going to put in a building now, and I'm going to pick the stupa. An amenity in my city is going to be late game very difficult to do. Now, I will be able to double the effects of this building and get two amenities in my city, but trust me when I say that is actually going to be really handy later on. But with feudalism means we've now got serfdom. I'm going to put scripture in. I'm going to take limes out of my government. Oh, no, I'll keep that in just for a second, because although my cities are doing useful things, I can just rock walls up into them for basically no cost at the moment because of the World Congress. But you can see, look at this, engineering 60% boosted. Boosts are going to be so important in this heroic age. I need to really look out for them where I can. Oh, I like it when tribal villages will just randomly give me boosts. Again, 60% of shipbuilding is amazing when I wasn't going to get that anyway. Excellent. There are huge lakes, massive lakes on this map that I am trying to get across. I'm looking to see if I can circumnavigate the globe and meet everybody. Both of those are basically a guaranteed golden age if we can pull them off. Another governor. Pingala in your pop. Let's get connoisseur. We've gone up from 50 culture to 63. Yes, look at this. It's an amazing second city. So you may have noticed that I'm really not building districts at all. At the moment, I'm focusing mainly on getting to 10 population because I get way more yields doing that than actually building a campus or a theater square. As mentioned before, my capital would benefit hugely from a campus, a theater square, an industrial zone, all of this stuff. But later, when I'm up at 100 population, I mean, we're talking silly numbers here, 100 population. I'm going to regret. I'm going to absolutely regret every district that I use and pop down. It's just about holding firm, using my leisure ability to get everything I need. I'm on 44 science and 63 culture. It's not bad considering I haven't got a single campus out or a single theater square or anything like that. There are a couple of districts there that I am looking to build in my capital. Now, this lake tile is not going to be very useful, so I might as well put something on it. And the choices are later into the game, much later later into the game, getting a water park for a huge burst of amenities in the city, or a harbour. Now the harbour is useful because it will provide me a trade route, and trade routes are going to be super important later into the game. But there are tall extensions in the harbour buildings that I, I think are going to be really handy later on. Look at this. When a governor is established, domestic trade routes to and from this city provide two food, and international trade routes to and from the city provide two food. I remember from the Japanese game, that building combined with the seaport, especially later into the game. When the governor is established of a seaport, that's another two food on trade routes and the aquaculture domestic trade routes get extra two as well. Yeah, our domestic trade routes can have plus six food, something like that. So I am going to have a harbour. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh, the temple extension's almost done. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Diebel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!